Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be here with you throughout the championship, so hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today, in this episode, I'm going to be looking at the Scotland team that I think is going to be picked to play against Wales in the final match of the opening weekend of this, the 2024 Six Nations Championship. And as always in these videos, we'll start with the style of play off the back of a World Cup where Scotland just didn't quite hit their straps. There were some decent performances, but they didn't really show up in the bigger games, sadly, because they've got a great squad at the moment. So I anticipate they're just going to continue from where they left off. I don't see that they really need to change too much. I just think they just need to up the standards and maybe find a way to perform in these bigger games. In terms of squad updates, since the original squad was released, there have been a number of changes. And most importantly and damagingly for Scotland is at Tighthead, where they've lo lost both uh, Hurd, who was the third choice player from Leicester Tigers, and the key one, WP Nell, who was almost certainly going to be on the bench. Income, Javen Sebastian and Elliot Miller-Mills, uh, who's playing at Northampton at the moment, uncapped. Where he's been playing well this season. He's had some good outings off the bench. And Sebastian hasn't played for a good few months, having been injured. So they're looking thin in the tight head ranks at the moment, Scotland. Also out, Adam Hastings. Ross Thompson comes in for him. And another key one, Darcy Graham, genuine superstar. Uh, in comes Ross McCann to replace him. OK, let's start with the forwards. And who I think are going to be selected this coming weekend, and I, as always, we'll start with the players that I think are, are absolutely nailed on for their starting positions. That front row is fearsome. Schumann, Turner, Fagerson, they played a lot together, and I think they are nailed on for their positions. Um, and also Matt Fagerson at eight, I just think he's such a bullish number eight, such a you know confrontational, hard ball carrier number eight. I think every team needs one of those, and Scotland, no different. Players that could play in the second row. We've got Gray and Cummings, Gilchrist and Skinner, a, a batch of four very experienced second rows there. So I think Townsend's going to have the ability to choose on form and maybe on balance of the side as well, depending on what he's looking for. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly what he's going to go for, but they're well blessed with players in the second row. And the back row as well, co-captain Rory Darge, He's struggling to get back from injury. There's been no indication that he's going to be fit to play this week. So I'm going to assume that he's out, which leaves probably Richie, Jamie Richie, former captain, uh, or Josh Bayless for the number six jersey. And at open side, two great options. Christie at Saracens has won three Man of the Match awards in recent weeks and has just been playing some fantastic rugby. And then Luke Crosby is another ferocious player. So, well... Uh, well stocked in the back row options too. This is what I think he's going to go with. I think he's going to go with Gilchrist and Gray in the second row, Richie and Christie in the back row. Christie may be a bit of a bolter there. Um, who knows? Okay, let's move on to the backs. And again, players I think are nailed on starters. Finn Russell, obviously, co-captain, leader of this team uh, in many ways. Um, without just the captain's armband, he's the you know, the driving force, he dictates what the style of play is going to be based on his skill set. Rugby's messy. And yeah, he's of course going to start. Duan van der Merwe had an incredible Six Nations Championship last year. He'll be starting on the left wing. I think Carl Stain will definitely start as well with um, with the injury to, uh, name is forgotten me, with the injury to Darcy Graham. So I think Carl Stain, who's... You know, it's actually been close between him and Graham over the years anyway. Carl Sainz a fantastic player. Kinghorn, I think, has been Scotland's best fullback for some years now. So he will undoubtedly start at fullback. In terms of the other positions, like they've shared the shirt a little bit at nine. Price, Horn and White. And it's probably quite a close run thing. And again, Townsend probably has the luxury of selecting on balanced, you know, how he wants the team to play um, into the centres. And this is probably where there's going to be the most conversation, I would say, in the selection meeting, because you've got K 
Cam Redpath, who is playing at 12 with Finn Russell at Bath, and they are playing beautifully together. I think Redpath just gives Russell a bit of extra space, that second distributor. And it means that Russell, rather than just everything having to be played off him, he now can play to somebody else, which will give him in turn a little bit more space and freedom as well. So I think that's worked very well for Bath. It'll be interesting to see whether Scotland want to bring that in. Redpath has been playing incredibly well. He just looks so balanced on the ball. Lots of time, just picks the right options, great skill levels. If they wanted to go more power, then you've got the option of McDowell, who's who's been banging um, in the games that I've seen him play for. Big, powerful man. Of course, the incumbents from last year, Tua Pilato and Jones, who made a fantastic partnership. Tua Pilato has been playing a little bit of 13 as well in the club side. So, there's a, there's a choice there. And then, of course, Rory Hutchinson at Northampton in their incredible back line has been a key part of that too. So there's a huge amount of possible options and strength in depth here for Scotland to pick from. This is what I think they'll go with. I think Townsend will pick Ali Price at nine. He was the incumbent at the end of the end of the World Cup and he's he's my favourite nine out of those three. I just think he's got a fizz about him. I think he's got an energy about him which I would want, I would want to play with. And then I think he's going to go with Redpath. I think he's going to bring that in from the club club partnership at Bath and I think that could work very nicely with Tua Peloto playing at 13 which brings me on to the bench. Uh, Ewan Ashman, Jamie Batty and I'm going to go with Elliot Miller-Mills, he's been playing recently uh, and he's played well. So I think they might go with him rather than bringing in uh, Javen Sebastian, who, like I said, hasn't played for some months. Skinner and Crosby cover all the back five scenarios. Skinner, the perennial benchman for Scotland, um, covering the second row and six. And then George Horn, Rory Hutchinson, who can play fullback, centre, very versatile as with Hugh Jones as well and again another back line here similar to England where players can change positions a lot there's a lot of flexibility here so in terms of tactics or if there's injuries there's a lot of options with these players that have been picked but what do you think at home what do you think Gregor's going to do do you think this is the side he's picked um, and do you think they're going to be good enough to beat Wales let me know in the comments down below give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind helps other people find it, which is all good stuff. And subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. And lastly, and most importantly, remember, get out and play.